grounding or earthing a PVC dust extraction system. It's time to stop the nonsense. Let's jump in. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video I want to address uh, earthing or grounding a PV dust extraction system for static. We're going to delve into it, I'm going to do a few experiments, I'm going to use some electrical test equipment just to get a few points across to people, just to show what an almost complete waste of time it is and try and dispel some of the nonsense that's out there when it comes to PVC pipe. PVC is an insulator, it's not a conductor, it is impossible to ground it. I'm going to demonstrate that to you with some PVC pipe that I have wrapped in copper wire that's grounded. I'll show you some static, I have some paper here just to give you a visual representation of static in action. I have my electrical test equipment here so we will use a 1000 volt insulation resistance test to show you just how much of an insulator PVC pipe is, uh, just to really kind of hammer it home. I won't get too in depth into the science of the whole thing, I just want to dispel some of the myths and what spurred me to make this video, I've seen so much discussion on woodworking forums and I've watched some amazing YouTube videos of guys going to unbelievable lengths to earth and ground their PVC dust extraction systems, doing absolutely beautiful work, making sure they have continuity between all their connections, just unbelievable work and it is a complete waste of time and I just feel such you know it's such a nonsense what they're doing but they don't realize it and I just want to get some information out there to show you uh, what it is. So we'll address what static is, we'll address why we're concerned about dust and static in our PVC pipes and uh, yeah let's jump in and do it. Okay, so let's jump in. Now, regular viewers of this channel, you know that I am an electrician. That's what I do as my profession. Uh, everything I do in the shop as woodworking is my hobby. So YouTube and woodworking is my hobby, which I like to share with you guys. And this is one area where my electrical expertise and woodworking hobby come together and I can actually help you guys out with my electrical side of things. Now, I work for a lot of different industries, pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. I work in a explosive atmosphere so I have to install lots of ATEX rated equipment so I know a little bit about static and all the problems you can get with it in explosive environments. I work in that kind of stuff. I've specced jobs for explosive atmospheres. We install ATEX rated equipment all the time. Now let me tell you that PVC pipe is almost never used in explosive atmospheres because it can hold a static charge and because it cannot be grounded. You cannot discharge the static from the pipe without coating the entire pipe. So wrapping a copper wire around a uh, PVC pipe, which I'll demonstrate for you now, is almost useless for getting rid of the static charge in the pipe. So PVC is an insulator. So don't take my word for it. I'm just a guy in a shed. Check the industry standards. Look at what they do for explosive atmospheres. They almost never use PVC pipe. Look at the gas industry, what they do when it comes to gas in PVC pipes. It's a real problem for the gas industry. Gas technicians working on PVC pipe have to go to extreme lengths to ensure that static is discharged from the pipe that static is discharged from them before they even touch the pipe and work on it. So it's a real problem for the gas industry. So that's all available. All those resources are available online if you just go ahead and Google it. So know that PVC pipe is almost never used in explosive atmospheres. Now, what are we worried about in our home shops? Well, you can build static on PVC pipes. We know that. So static basically is just an imbalance of electrical charges between two surfaces. So static builds up on insulators. It's called static electricity because it is just that. It's static. It cannot move. Insulators cannot conduct electricity. So the static gets electricity is stuck. The electrons are essentially stuck in the material or on the surface of the material. I'm not going to go super in depth into the science of all this stuff. There's loads of YouTube videos explaining how static works. I suggest you go check them out if you're really interested. But basically, if you rub two insulators together, one of them can lose some electrons onto the surface of the others. Those electrons want to get away they're uh, negatively charged as opposed to the other insulator, which is positively charged relative to this. That's why they attract. And when you rub static over pieces of paper and stuff like that, it attracts the paper because the paper is positively charged in relation to the insulator that has the static built up on it. Now, where does that cause a problem? If you get a build up of static and you touch it and you discharge it, you can cause an arc. And if you cause an arc in an explosive atmosphere, you can get an explosion. If you get it right, fuel and air mixture within a pipe, you can cause an explosion. It has happened in some uh, factories. In fact, there's a factory not too far from me, or one, of the biggest, or one of the biggest producers of manufactured timber products in the world. They have had a couple of explosions. So it's it is possible in an industrial environment, but know that in 
a home workshop, it would be a near impossibility for you to build an explosive atmosphere in your ducting system. So that's one thing I need to stress. It is almost impossible for you to do that. So let's have a look at some PVC pipe. I have some PVC pipe wrapped in copper here. Let me just demonstrate some static and show you the kind of absurdity of trying to ground this copper pipe. And let's have a look at an insulation resistance test using a thousand volts. Let's do that now. Okay guys, so I have a piece of PVC pipe. Now this is an offcut from my own dust extraction system. This is just four inch or a hundred millimeter PVC pipe, the kind of stuff that you use in sewerage or wastewater from your house. It's a great cheap option when it comes to installing a dust extraction system. In fact, I have a full video of me installing my own dust extraction system. So I have wrapped it in copper wire, far more than you would do on your own dust extraction system or I have seen anybody else do. So I just want to prove to you that we have continuity. This is now onto my metal conduit, which is grounded. So just to show that we have continuity, hopefully you can hear that meter beep there when I touch the probes together. So we are grounded and if I go onto the ground or the earth in the socket, you can hear that we're grounded. So just to show that that copper wire is now properly grounded. So let's do the test. Okay, so here's our first little test little thing I want to demonstrate to you. So we have our PVC pipe, it's wrapped in a copper wire. This copper wire is grounded. I have some pieces of paper on top of my workbench here to give you guys a visual representation of static in action. Um, it's the best way I can do it. So if I just lightly rub this end of the pipe, even though the pipe is wrapped in copper wire and grounded, you should see the paper. See the papers jump up there. Hopefully that's uh, visible on camera. Now the pipe is negatively charged in respect to the paper. The paper is then attracted to the pipe. So you can see it's actually stuck onto the pipe there now. So you can see I have this copper pipe wire, um, this PVC pipe wrapped in copper wire. I can still build static in this area, but it's worse than even that. I can build static in between this copper and attract the paper. Let's see if I can actually do that for you now. Because PVC is an insulator, it's non-conductive. So you're only only going to remove static from the area of the pipe that that copper wire actually touches. So you can see the kind of futility of running copper wire uh, in around your PVC pipe. So let's see if we can get the paper to jump up. So there you go, stuck to that right beside the copper wire. If you guys can see that, hopefully you can. So uh, in, even in between the copper wire, I can get the paper to stick because there's static present as you can see. So you can see just how impossible it is to ground PVC with uh, copper wire like this. And another thing to note was wrapping copper wire around the PVC pipe does absolutely nothing for the inside of the pipe. So it's not going to remove any static whatsoever from the inside of the pipe. Even drilling screws, which I've seen some guys do, drill a heap of screws into their pipe, thinking it's going to act like lightning conductors. That's not how static works. Air is an insulator, so is PVC. And I'm going to show you just how good an insulator PVC is now. Let's do that. Okay guys, I want to give you a close-up of my meter and try and do this test. It's a little hard to capture all this, but let's keep the light on that. So I have it set to 500 volts. Let me just up that to 1000 volts and I'm going to put it onto auto. So it's, it's continuously now sending at 1000 volts. You can see just how good an uh, insulator air is. Look how close I can get these probes. And I still have a greater than 1999 mega ohms. That's basically infinite resistance. No current is going to flow. So you can see how good an insulator air is. If I put my probes onto my workbench, you can see that drop down. So I'm dropping down to about, about 504 mega ohms. That's still an absolutely massive resistance. You would hardly get any current to flow there with standard, say, uh, domestic voltage 240 volts. You would get no current to flow there. Here's PVC pipe. Just to show you, if I put my probes here and here, greater than, you know, it's basically 2000 mega ohms, which is near infinity. No matter how close I get these probes together, you can see that that 1000 volts, I cannot get any kind of less of an insulin or uh, resistance reading. And just to show you, this is a pretty thin piece of uh, PVC. So it's, you know, it's about three or four millimeters. If I put one probe on the inside of the pipe, and put one probe directly opposite on the outside of the pipe. You can see that resistance reading does not change whatsoever. So you can see the problem now. PVC is an insulator and it's a bloody good insulator. It's what we actually coat all our electrical cables in is PVC because it's such a good insulator. So you can see the futility of running copper wire on the outside of your pipe, hoping it's going to do something for the static on the inside of the pipe. 
look at that. That's a thousand volts I'm testing that with now, and the insulate, the resistance has not changed. Even from this, I can put it on this side of the pipe with the copper on it. You can see that copper is doing absolutely nothing for any areas in between the copper. Look, resistance is not changing. I'm trying to hammer this home as best I can. If I go onto the copper wire, see that resistance drops to, to zero. That's copper wire to copper wire. Copper wire between the PVC. You know, it's a near inf infinite resistance. So there you go. So copper wire on the outside of the pipe is not doing anything for the inside of the pipe. Copper wire on the inside of the pipe is doing nothing for the outside of the pipe. And the copper wire is only removing static with the area it comes in contact and it's a very small copper wire so it's only that area of the PVC that it will remove static from. So there you go. Okay, so where does that leave us? What do, we, what do we do? Where do we go from here? Well, just know that in a home workshop, you are never going to build an explosive atmosphere in your pipe. It's a near impossibility. So it's not really a concern. Now, if you are getting static shocks from your pipe, you can get copper tape or aluminum tape, aluminium tape, and you can wrap that area of that pipe in copper tape, making sure that the whole outside area of that pipe is conductive, you can ground that. Design your dust extraction system so that the worst offenders are the closest to your dust extractor. So for instance, my uh, planar thickness or my joint or planar if you're in America is right beside my dust extractor. That means all the heavy chippings have very, very uh, short distance to travel in that PVC pipe to get into my dust extractor. So it's not really building any static. And because PVC is non-conductive, you don't have to worry about that building static anywhere else on the rest of your system. So that's one good thing to note. Now you might notice that I actually ran a copper pipe in my wire or in my PVC pipe. So you're saying, John, you're telling us not to do it. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm telling you that it's almost uh, futile. I stuck it in there just because it is doing something. It's any area that comes in contact with, it will, remove, will uh, bleed off the static from. It will provide a conductor for those electrons to get down to ground. Um, so it's doing something. It's almost doing absolutely nothing, but it's not. Uh, it's doing a small bit. That's why I just thrown it in there because I had copper wire. I'm an electrician. It took me two minutes to throw it in the pipe. I said, hey, why not? But know that it's doing almost nothing. I have watched guys on YouTube bond their joints. So put a screw here, put a screw into the coupler, put a screw here, put a screw into the coupler. What an absolute waste of time, guys. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful bonding job. If this was metal pipe, that would be the exact correct thing to do. But uh, when it comes to a plastic system, that's an absolute waste of time. There is no conductivity in PVC pipe. That's what I'm trying to hammer across to you. So let's move on. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Now, hopefully this will end the debates, end all the endless conversations on the forums, stop all the YouTube videos of guys going to unbelievable great lengths to earth and bond and ground our PVC dust extraction systems. You cannot ground PVC pipe, as I've just demonstrated to you. You can feel free to run a couple of wire on the inside of that pipe if it makes you feel better. I did know that it is almost doing nothing for you but it is doing something. If it makes you feel better, by all means, go ahead and do it. Now, if you're worried about building an explosive atmosphere in your workshop, if you think you're producing that kind of sawdust and thinking that you're getting a lot of static, install a metal system. If you have a professional setup, install a metal system. Health and safety of your employees and the place is up to you. Make sure that you adhere to your health and safety regulations, to all your codes, all your regulations. Look at the industry standards. All the resources are available online. You will find them in all your local areas of all your health and safety standards when it comes to this kind of stuff. All the kind of applications for explosive atmospheres. There is a whole raft of legislation and uh, information out there if you want to check it up. But know that in a home workshop, you will not, or it's, it would be almost an impossibility for you to build an explosive atmosphere with inside your PVC pipe. But like I say, if you are getting static shocks from your PVC pipe, wrap some copper tape around it, that area, and ground that area, and bleed off that static. That will sort the problem out. Keep your worst offending machines closest to your dust extractor, and know that the dust in your dust extractor is the most dangerous thing, not the dust in your pipes. Empty your dust extractors regularly. Don't let them sit for days, weeks on end with dust in them. That's a fire hazard. Empty them regularly. And most importantly, when it comes to dust in your home workshop, keep the bloody stuff out of your lungs. That's what you need to be worried about. Not explosions in your PVC pipe. It's not going to happen. And uh, don't worry about grounding your pipe. Run the copper wire if you want. So good dust masks, good dust extraction system, 
be worried about your lungs rather than explosions. And if you're in a professional setup, well then make sure uh, you adhere to all the safety standards. So hopefully that's helpful guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. Hopefully it's given you some information. I just want to dispel some of the myths and some of the nonsense about trying to ground PVC pipe. It's almost an impossibility. So uh, yeah, hopefully that does help. It's one area where I have expertise that I can actually use my electrical expertise to help the woodworking community. So there you go guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. So there we go guys, that has been my video on static and PVC pipes, earthing and grounding and bonding them and trying to dispel some of the myths. Hopefully you've enjoyed that guys. If you have, give the video a thumbs up. If you've uh, any comments, any questions, anything you feel I've left out, just leave it in the comment section below. I will get back to you. Remember that all the resources available for all this kind of information is available online if you just want to go and check it out. Uh, if you want to support the channel and what I do here, I have a Patreon set up. Links to all my resources will be below in the description. So like I say, any comments, any questions you have for me, leave it in the comment section. I try to get back to everybody so hopefully that's been useful guys and hopefully you have enjoyed it i'm freezing now i'm going to get a cup of tea i'll see you in the next one take it easy